Okay, first of all, it's, it's great to be at the Adams House in Fall River. Good afternoon, everyone. We want to thank everybody for coming out. We want to talk about this important affordable housing initiatives that Governor Healy and her administration are working on extremely hard to ensure our community is able to increase the availability of lower costing housing units. A matter of great importance has, has been affected in Fall River is affordable housing. Much like other cities across our state, we have faced challenges related to housing affordability and we look towards solutions to help our residents gain relief. We work with the Fall River Housing Authority and the Community Development Agency to help us with these matters every single day. Through these partnerships, we work hard to ensure families can find affordable housing, although the work is never really done. Governor Healy's new tax cut bill is an example of the important investment we're going to have in our city offering solutions for the matter of affordable housing. The tax cuts that Governor Healy has proposed will be a tremendous help to encourage housing developments and lower cost living in all of our gateway cities. I, of course, want to thank Governor Healy and our local legislative delegates who are here today for their efforts in helping create solutions that will benefit both renters and homeowners in our community. At this time, I would like to introduce Governor Healy to speak about the administration's tax cut bills. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is great to be here in Fall River. I was here just a couple weeks ago, and it's great to be back um, and great to be able to stand with you, Mayor. Thank you for the warm welcome to Fall River and the great partnership and all the great work you're doing. It's a treat to be here with Chairman Rodericks, a great champion for Fall River, also a leader and a partner on so many issues, um, including the tax uh, package that we're going to talk about. And our dear friends in the legislature, your own rep, Carol Fiola is here, Representative Paul Schmidt, Representative Alan Sylvia. Grateful we are to all of you for your partnership. Community and business leaders are here as well, including Adams House developer Bob Karam. Um, Bob, thank you for your vision. You've done so much great development all over town, and I know that will continue, and this is just another example of that. And to Ken Fiola, who's been quarterbacking all of this, of course, head of the Bristol County Economic Development Consultants, thank you so much, Ken. Um, excited to be back here celebrating yet another initiative. Uh, good stuff happening here in Fall River and more good stuff to come. I'm joined here today by Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus. And we want to just say on behalf of the whole uh, administration, it's wonderful to be here at Adams House. What we see is really pretty special. A beautiful place that provided generations care um, initially as a nursing home and now it has a new life, providing 34 homes in a great livable community. It's adding to Fall River's housing stock. It's also absorbing a piece of the demand for homes that's been driving up prices here and across our state. And we know it's a matter of supply and demand. When there are more homes, prices are going to go down. And right now, that is the greatest challenge we face as a state. We're really proud that the HDIP's tax, uh, state tax cre credit program helped to make this happen. So we're here today to talk about expanding those tax credits that helped make this project possible and also the ways in which we're trying to reduce costs, make life more affordable folks, uh, for folks across the state. Um, that's because last month, in partnership with our wonderful partners in the legislature and, of course, Chair Rodericks, uh, Chair of, uh, of, of Ways and Means, we passed the state's first major tax cuts in over 20 years. That's a big deal. For the first time in over 20 years, we cut taxes. Tax cuts are here, they're here for everyone, and they are about saving money. Parents and caregivers should, should know that you now will have the most generous child and dependent tax credit in the United States. We also removed the two-child cap, which made no sense on that, uh, but that's a big deal. That's real money going back in the pockets of families around the state. We're also focused on making housing more affordable, as I said, because this is the single greatest challenge facing our state, and that's why we zeroed in on ways to incent further development in our tax package. Seniors, Seniors, we provided relief, made life more affordable for seniors who pay rent or have a mortgage by doubling the senior circuit tax breaker, uh, breaker tax credit. That's a big deal. It's $1,200, additional $1,200 back in the pockets of seniors now. 
In addition, uh, we have increased deductions for renters, for commuters. We cut short-term capital gains. We cut the estate tax. This has real consequences for folks, and we're really, really proud of it. And for our homeowners with septic systems, uh, you should know the good news. We tripled the tax credit now available from six grand to 18 grand, which we know is important for so many. Um, but the Housing Development Incentive Program, or HDIP, this is a really terrific program that's in play in gateway cities across Massachusetts, and it's a tax break that unlocks more housing. As I said, housing is our greatest challenge. We need to supercharge housing production in the state, and we need more developments like this. And that's why we are grateful uh, that the legislature uh, and, and our team, we work together to increase the cap on HDIP from $10 million a year to $57 million next year. That's a big deal. That's going to create a bunch of new homes all over this state. We also increase the statewide low-income housing tax credit by 50%, from $40 million to $60 million. That's a tax break that has a proven track record of creating more affordable homes. This is all part of our affordability agenda um, because lowering costs for folks, making life more affordable at a time when people are paying more for groceries, more at the pump, more for clothes, you name it. That's what we need to do. So um, it's also why we filed recently something called the Affordable Homes Act. It's a $4.1 billion plan to create or preserve tens of thousands of new housing units all over the state tax incentives to unlock new homes, uh, ways to eliminate some of the practices, some of the barriers that got in the way of housing development. It's absolutely where we need to go because it's going to lower costs for housing all around the state. That is not only important for families who need access to housing. I don't care you know, if you're talking about um, access to, to, to affordable rental apartments or access to housing units or even the ability to downsize right now. It's really hard to find a place to move into. It's also a matter of our competitiveness, and we have talked a lot about this. Our team's focused on three things, making Massachusetts more affordable, more competitive, and more equitable. And tax cuts and a housing bond bill like the Affordable Homes Act go directly to making life more affordable as well as making Massachusetts more competitive because the number one thing that businesses are struggling right now with is talent. How to hold on to workers, how to hold on to employees, how to attract employees. I want businesses moving to Massachusetts and growing, but they can only do that if there's some place for their employees to afford to, to, afford to live. So that's what we're getting with initiatives like what we're proposing. Um, and let me just close by saying how much of a fan I am of Fall River. It's great. I got down here a little bit early and drove along the waterfront, which is just happening. So many good things happening down there with Route 79 and other, and other projects. It's great to see and know that we want to invest more in Fall River. Um, that means working closely with the delegation, terrific delegation, and local leaders. Most recently, we announced a program, our Community One Stop for Growth Awards. This is a bunch of programming and money coming uh, into Fall River to help. Our MassWorks infrastructure program, $2 million to advance the flood prevention work at Stafford Square. Uh, another $1.2 million to three different projects in Fall River under our utilize, underutilized properties program. Our site readiness program invested over $589,000 to help replace the old wood pile um, over at the pier at, at Battleship Cove. And, you know, I go through the list, 50 grand to the Fabric Arts Festival for its work preserving and celebrating the, the culture of Portugal and the Azores, uh, 85,000 to the city of Fall River for a downtown parking study, another 90,000 to the Fall River Development Authority for a corridor master plan. This is all great stuff, and I'm grateful to be able to, to do this and work along the legislature in making sure that Fall River and the South Coast gets what it deserves. So always terrific to be here, um, and I want to thank my colleagues in government, and I want to introduce our Secretary of Housing, Ed Augustus. Um, he will uh, talk briefly, but just know that housing was such a priority for our team when we started that we did something that hadn't been done before and create for the first time a Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, somebody whose point on driving housing production every single day around the state. Secretary Augustus.
Thank you, Governor, and uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the legislative delegation, thank you for having us, and thank you for uh, being such great partners. Uh, Governor Haley and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll have set out a clear vision in motion to address one of our greatest challenges of our time. And I want to thank them for giving me the honor to serve in this role. The Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities is five months old. And we've been tasked by the Governor and Lieutenant Governor to build more housing and build it faster. And we're doing just that. The historic $1 billion tax relief package the Governor signed into law last month includes an infusion of funding for two key programs which the Governor mentioned. The increase in the HDIP program, which I know Fall River has put to very good use in the past and is now significantly increased, which means more projects here in Fall River can move forward to build more housing at market rate in this gateway city, as well as the low-income tax credits that the governor mentioned, which makes sure that there is an affordable option in developments here in Fall River and around the Commonwealth. As the former city manager of a gateway city, I understand how important housing is to growth. In Worcester, we needed both market rate housing and affordable housing to revitalize neighborhoods and provide people with safe, attractive, affordable places to live. Adding more housing not only keeps prices under control, it helps drive the local economy and puts more people in our downtowns and neighborhoods where they can support small businesses and dining. Even as we expand our stock of affordable housing, we know that market rate rates continue to be an essential part of using housing as a growth strategy in our gateway cities. Additionally, the tax bill, uh, as I mentioned, has a huge increase in the low-income tax credit. But the governor wanted more. And so the Affordable Homes Act that she introduced two weeks ago has $4.1 $3 billion in proposed funding to supercharge all of the major tools that we use to incent housing production of all kinds. It also included 28 policy changes. It's the most significant housing legislation filed in Massachusetts since 40B 50 years ago. Coupled with the HDIP and the LIHTC, this bill will supercharge housing production and tackle systemic causes of the housing crisis. Right now, we have a 1.6 percent uh, vacancy rate in Massachusetts. That means at this moment there are only 1.6 percent of the rental or for sale properties available across Massachusetts. That's the lowest of the 50 states. Everybody knows somebody who's tried to purchase a home and has not been successful after multiple times putting an offer in, or how difficult it is to find an apartment that's safe and affordable and of the right size for your family. That is the imperative that brings us to the Affordable Homes Act. And I would mention we've got some of our folks from public housing, and some of these folks here uh, very much were involved in informing what we needed to include in this package as it relates to affordable as it relates to public housing, and this bill recommends a, a tripling of the capital investments to our public housing stock and making sure that we really make up uh, for some of the deferred maintenance that exists in public housing across Massachusetts. Uh, with that, I have the honor to introduce somebody who needs no introduction to the folks here in Fall River, somebody I had the pleasure of serving in the legislature with, uh, who's not only a, an effective uh, and very talented legislator, but who's also a very good person. Uh, and he brings that heart to his work every day. Uh, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Jim and Roderick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, Senator. We have, we've known each other for a, a long time. We've had the honor of working one, one another. And, you know, it's, uh, I love to hear the governor say that she loves Fall River. <laughs> And I want you to know that Fall River loves you, uh, because it was through your leadership that uh, we in the legislature, my colleagues, Representative Schmid, Fiola, and Sylvia, an overwhelming majority of both the House and Senate passed, as the governor said, the first major tax cut in over 20 years. And actually, it was the largest tax cut in the history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Over a billion dollars, that is broad, that is comprehensive. It helps working families through uh, providing the largest child care tax credit 
uh, in the whole country. Uh, it helps our employers, uh, it helps our families, it helps our communities, and it certainly helps uh, providing resources to increase our housing stock. As the governor said and the secretary said through so-called HDIP through the Low Income Housing uh, Tax Credit, uh, housing is the number one issue that we hear about every day as we talk to our constituents. Uh, it affects um, so much um, here in Massachusetts and we need to build more housing and we are providing the resources with this bill uh, to do so. So I thank the governor for her leadership, for filing the legislation. Um, I thank my colleagues um, for uh, joining us in supporting uh, this piece of legislation and I look forward uh, to hearing the sounds of uh, skill saws and, uh, and nail guns and construction going on uh, in increasing uh, and building uh, more housing stock here in the, Ma in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I'd also like to thank my good friends Jim and Joan Smith. I just had a, a pre-tour. Uh, I know you're going to take some folks in your apartments. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the views of Somerset are beautiful. Uh, I'm sure, and I know how beautiful the sunsets are, must be uh, from your vantage um, here in this building. So uh, thank you all. Uh, and now I have the pleasure of introducing probably uh, the foremost expert in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on HDIP, uh, someone whom, uh, when I need advice and counsel on uh, the best housing policy and how to structure uh, 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 certain policy. I, I rely on his advice and counsel, uh, but that's uh, Ken Fiola. Ken? Thank you, thank you, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for uh, coming out today. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to um, take this time to recognize the work that Governor Healy's done on behalf of getting this momentous tax bill passed within the legislature. Her leadership, along with that of the legislative delegation, is unparalleled in bringing forward the tools that we will need to move this city forward into the future. And I just think that needs to be recognized. When Governor, then candidate Healy was here last summer, we talked about the age. We talked about other things that were important to not only Fall River, but other gateway cities. And out of the box, she started delivering these things one after another. She's a go-getter, she's a doer, she's our kind of people. We love her here in Fall River. I'd also like to thank, you know, Secretary Augustus, the legislative delegation, um, for their work in also pa uh, passing this momentous, momentous tax cut package that will lead to more in divergent housing opportunities across the Commonwealth as well as the Gateway Cities. Uh, I'm here to speak to you about the HDIP component of this package, which is something that we've been working on for a long, long time. As the governor has indicated, this HDIP program increases the annual program cap from $10 million to $57 million in FY23, right? That's a huge, huge increase, and it's going to meet the demand that's currently out there. Um, Thereafter, the HDIP will be allocated $30 million annually. Again, a significant investment to meet the demand that's there. This along with rental deductions, where previous renters were allowed to deduct half of their rent paid up to $3,000, this bill increases it to $4,000. This comprehensive package, I think, is probably one of the best pieces of legislation that I've ever seen emerge from Beacon Hill, and I've been working with Beacon Hill for a long, long period of time. With regard to the HDIP, HDIP remains one of the most important economic development tools in Fall River as well as the Gateway Cities. To date, HDIP funding has been used to create more than 200 market rate units within the city. And I'd like to thank Bob Karam and Jim Wallace uh, for their leadership and their, their, their vision to rehabilitate the Adams House here, that, as we all know, was a nursing home that fell into hard times and has fallen into disrepair, and they stepped up to the plate and they moved this project forward to accommodate the beautiful Marguerite housing units in here. And once they got, yeah, thank you. Not only once they got a taste of what could be done, they took their hard-earned money and their vision to the waterfront. And they also invested more than $17 million in the residences at River's Edge along our emerging waterfront. So thank you again, Bob and Jim, for those. You know, Fall River is, um, 
you know, it's a it's a great place to live, as we all know. And, it, you know, we certainly have our ups and downs, but I think the vision of Fall River is very positive now. The activity level in Fall River, the momentum that's being created between private sector development, public investment, and what's happening on waterfront is very, very exciting. As a result of that excitement, people from all over are starting to take notice of Fall River. You know, whether it's a commuter rail coming to, you know, coming to fruition, and hopefully we'll be riding that by the end of the second quarter of 2024, is that right? Okay. I know it was supposed to be this. It was supposed to be December of this year, so there was a little point of discussion in the Fiola household as to why that didn't come to fruition. But but we got beyond that. Um, but right but right now, this interest in Fall River is so big. And I was speaking to Secretary Augustus earlier uh, before this uh, press conference. We have on our board right now more than two thousand potential market rate units coming to fruition. That is a large amount of activity that's going to take place within the city over the next couple of years. Those are construction jobs, those are jobs that are going to be spread out across the board for you know, purchases of supplies. And collectively, those 2,000 units represent a minimum of $600 million in private investment. That type of investment has never been, well, I shouldn't say never, but at least in my time, has not been seen within the city of Fall River. And I think it's a testament to the people that have born and raised here and actually put in their hard money into making Fall River what it is today, and now we're taking this to the next level. So this, right now we all know that Fall River has 28% of its housing stock is subsidized. Okay, Fall River is doing a very good job in performing, uh, allowing and also accommodating affordable housing. Now we're trying to balance the city, bring back the middle class. These HDEP units, these mockery units, help us bring back that middle class into the city that may have fled to the suburbs during leaner times. These units are nice, they're affordable, they're, they're funky, and they're going to be a nice asset to the overall city itself. As we continue to create a more balanced city, this HDEP program is one of the biggest tools we have. And I am super excited, and the Senator and I have talked about this monthly, weekly, daily, whenever we see each other, where's the HDIP, where's the HDIP, the governor, where's the HDIP, where's the HDIP, Carol, and everybody else, where's the HDIP? And they delivered. And for that, I'll be for eternally grateful and thankful. And they will see the results of their investment here in Fall River because they will be back. We hope the governor comes back every week to see what we're doing here because I think when she sees what's happening here, it's something that we can all be proud of. So thank you again. And with that, I'll invite uh, the governor back to the podium for any uh, questions that you may have. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions about this? Oh, boy, you know, my relationship with Fall River, it goes back a number of years uh, from the time I ran for Attorney General back in 2014 through experiences over the years. It's a wonderful, wonderful place, wonderful people, wonderful history, um, and in one of these places that should inspire people across Massachusetts. It's been a place that's, you know, had to invent and reinvent itself over the years through a lot of challenging and changing times. Um, a huge part of our cultural history as a state. On this issue, though, I know in particular, you know, this is a community, as Ken said, there have been some communities that have not been as welcoming and have done things in terms of exclusionary zoning practices and creating certain frictions with respect to the construction of affordable housing. And I want to credit Fall River for the work that it has done in making more ho affordable housing available. I also want to credit Fall River, and one of the things that was so important with HDIP and some of the other things we did in this legislation was to just incent more housing development generally. Fall River is blessed to have the delegation and elected officials who, who serve and represent the people of Fall River and also to have incredible private developers. When you think about Bob and Jim and the work that they do, people know how to put money to good use and create a beautiful product. And, and that's what we have so many examples of in Fall River. It's why we wanted to make sure that in this legislation, we were doing our part, providing the funding to make that happen, right? And so I know, you know, and, and Ken's comments about the people looking to now migrate uh, back to Fall River or move to Fall River, it's really true, you know, and the race is on. And so much is happening. I was here earlier driving around. A lot of good is happening, a lot of good. And so I just see, you know, nothing but, um, nothing but a huge upward trajectory for Fall River. 
Anything else? You all cold? I know, I know, I know. The sun is setting. Well, if there's anything else, we're good, Valentina? Okay, again, huge thanks to my colleagues in government for your service and partnership, to Secretary Augustus for his team, and, uh, and for all of you who helped come out and make, uh, make this possible. Thank you.